Okay. I want to go through these two articles that we would have done in class. And um, I'm going to go through them in a couple of different ways. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to essentially, if you haven't done so already, pause this recording and go back and click on the PDF and actually read through this article. Now, normally what we would do in class is I would have you read for about six minutes or so, so you would skim through, and then I'd get you to tell me a little bit about the article, essentially to see how well you could figure out the main points of the article in that sort of six to eight minute kind of time frame. So um, figuring out how to go about doing that. But for the purposes of today, what I'd like you to do is we're going to focus upon this as an example, both in terms of you know looking through its literature review and in terms of looking at its methodology, because one of the things we're focusing upon this week is essentially how do we go about determining whether or not this is good research. So the first thing I'd like you to do is pause the video and go back and review this particular article, Snakes or Ladders, an examination of the experience of two teacher leaders returning to classroom teaching. Okay, assuming that you paused at that point and went back to actually review this particular article or that you had already reviewed the PDF beforehand and if you didn't review it in sort of a careful way you know semi careful spending say about 10 to 15 minutes on it I'm guessing um, I'm gonna give you a chance to pause the video again and go back and spend a little bit more time with it um, but assuming that you have Okay, you're back with me now, so if you either have already reviewed it or you just finished reviewing it, a couple of things to look at. Uh, first is that this is a, an article that was published, as you can see up here up at the top, by the Canadian Journal of Educational Administration and Policy. This is probably the main professional uh, journal, the main scholarly journal in Canada for educational administration. Um, which is the term that you would tend to see used most often for educational leadership programs in Canada. So this is very similar to that Education Administration Quarterly article that um, we looked at last week or the week before. Um, you know, basically EAQ is sort of the American version of the Canadian Journal of Educational Administration and Policy. So with that bit of information in mind, we'll take a look through here. Um, as I mentioned before, the first thing you always want to look at is look through the abstract to see um, about the article and to see how the article is structured and, and use that as a guide to um, be one of sort of the two main things that you use to determine if this is going to be a, an article that is of interest to you. Um, as we talked about last week, after that, I would actually um, essentially scan down into the conclusions which I'm going to find down here on page 22 and then I would read through the conclusion kind of carefully to see again is this an article that is going to be of interest to me and you can see you know they've got a reasonably substantial conclusion here um, you know they try to bring it back to the literature um, you know, they mention a little bit here about uh, recommendations for teachers. You can see here at the bottom, um, you know, about future research or further research. So they're doing some of the things that we said that um, we would hope to see in a, um, you know, in an article that we were looking at. But for our purposes here today, what I want to do is actually scroll back up, or if you've printed this out, to turn back to um, first the literature review. So let's go back and take a look at the literature review. So starting back here on, um, well, starting back with the introduction. Now you'll note one of the things that they do here is the introduction sort of seamlessly goes into the literature review. So um, it's really here with this potential contribution, which is going to be on page three that potential contribution of teacher leaders where the literature review starts. And if you actually look through, again, this is one of those uh, more thematically organized literature reviews as opposed to the more funneling or narrowing effect that we were talking about. 
So you'll note that they talk about themes in the literature, and you can see in many respects they actually go through and cite a variety of folks that you know found that particular theme. Um, oftentimes, one of the strategies that they are using, and you'll probably use this in your own writing, is you'll see sort of a broad general statement that has a lot of citations after it, and then they'll try to detail out that particular thought, you know, to essentially explore it a little bit more with some specific pieces of literature um, to try to tease out the details, and in some cases even putting in, you know, direct quotes that are particularly useful. You know, and again, uh, thematic in nature as opposed to that kind of narrowing effect. Um, not a bad literature review. I encourage you to take a look at it as a sample. I think it does a particularly good job in terms of the integrative writing. Um, even when it does look at specific articles, it either does so in a way where they're comparing and contrasting uh, different things or they're actually picking apart whether or not it's good. So, for example, in this teacher leader's return in the classroom, um, you know, they talked about, well, first of all, they said, well, there's a lot of literature related to teacher leaders and school improvement. There's not a lot about formal teacher leaders who have gone from a leadership position back into the classroom. In fact, based upon their review, you can sort of imply that there were only two. Uh, this first one here by Steinbacher and Reed and Powers, um, 2011, and they tell us a little bit about what they found, um, but they also talk a little bit about some of the limitations or some of the cautions that they have about that, and then they talk about this Fireman uh, one, and they'll give you a little bit more information about the study and stuff, um, and going through and, and not necessarily just summarizing it, but critiquing the literature, and we'll talk a little bit next week about the differences, um, either next week or the week after, about the differences between um, summarizing the literature and critiquing the literature, but you want to make sure that you are critiquing the literature. Um, they start here now talking about, and again, teacher leadership and role theory, so again, this is another theme in the literature, and again, I think they're doing a pretty good job at discussing the theme as opposed to um, describing the literature, although what you'll note in this one is this is really, I think, this part here, teacher leadership and role theory, while not specifically itemized this way or not specifically sectioned this way, this is really the first part of their methodology because they're getting into essentially the conceptual framework that they're using to examine this particular study from. Particularly, they're using this Owens definitions um, as a way to sort of operationalize their study. So getting into the methodology section here now, which is really where we want to spend a bit of time today on, um, because we're looking to see, you know, this idea of good versus bad studies and whether or not people are providing um, enough information in there so we can, uh, you know, determine is this a good study or bad study. So they begin the methodology section by providing, you know, uh, again, a caution um, about how to go about doing these types of studies. Then they tell you a little bit about exactly what they're doing. They're using a case study methodology. Uh, you can see here they mentioned that they're using two cases, and they'll tell you a little bit about those. So, you know, the idea of a case study is something that can be bounded, um, which they define based upon Sharon Miriam's work as a single entity around which there are boundaries. Um, you can see as you go through here, they continue to tell you a little bit about uh, the nature of their case study. It's jumping around a bit on me here now. Um, you know, so they go through and they talk about, you know, the data were collected over a 12-month period. They tell you a little bit about who the people are. Uh, so there's Susan, and there is, um, later on through here, they'll tell us about a second one. Um, Debbie is the second one that they're looking at. You're starting to get here, and I, it's jumping around a bit on me, and I apologize about that. But you see here they go through and tell you about the nature of data that they collected from Susan. So they did 15 face-to-face -face or electronic conversations. They were 60 to 90 minutes each. Um, they, let's see, transcribed those interviews. Uh, they don't specifically say they transcribed them, but you can see that they were reading and rereading the transcripts. 
Uh, you'll note that they carried out a member check, which is something that you would do to ensure the reliability and validity of um, a particular study. And, you know, let's see, what else? They were interested in collecting stories, so, um, you know, they may be doing a narrative analysis. We'll see about that. But, Again, they're going back now and telling you a little bit more about the methodology. So they're using Robert Stake's work here to talk about case study and how to go about doing case study. Uh, you'll see now here as they're talking about the process again, um, they are going back and again talking a little bit more about how they went about it and collected data and how they were analyzing the data. You see they're citing Sharon and Miriam again here now. They're explaining to you what they did and then they're saying, you know, that... The way in which we went about this was consistent with this guy Stake here who says that, you know, you should go about it in this particular way. So again, they're starting to essentially describe, or not starting to, they're in, in great detail actually, describing the process that they undertook, but also then relating that process or their own process back to what the literature says you should be doing. Um, you know, so those are signs that you would look for to say, you know, yeah, this probably isn't a, a bad methodology section. It seems to be, um, you know, and here's the last little bit here that they're talking a little bit more about, um, you know, their data analysis process that they're using here um, and, you know, how they went about that. So as I'm looking through this, I'm seeing that, you know, this isn't necessarily a, you know, a great study um, in terms of its methodology because, for example, they don't tell us about the sampling techniques. So why were Susan and Debbie chosen? How were they chosen? Um, you know, was this a purposeful approach or maybe these are two grad students that the author had available to uh, him or her? You know, so we don't know much about the sampling procedure, the sampling technique. The only thing they mention about reliability and validity in there is this idea of member checking so we don't know what else they did along those lines and typically speaking in a study that relies predominantly on qualitative uh, methods you would have several ways in which you're going to have them um, ensuring the reliability ensuring the rigor they don't tell us a lot about the process of analysis um, you know I mentioned earlier up here that they were looking for stories so that led me to believe that they were doing a narrative analysis but when I read down here I see that they actually used the six areas of tension experienced by Susan as a framework to describe Debbie's experiences so Obviously, this sounds more like a, uh, a grounded theory kind of analysis to me because they're using things that came from this person to help analyze this person. So, again, you know, I'm an experienced researcher and I have these kinds of questions about how the analysis was undertaken. So, I'm sure as you're looking through this, um, you don't see anywhere where it says we used this method of data analysis so you probably have questions about it as well um, you know so these are the kinds of things that you would be looking for in the articles that you're reviewing for your own literature review to determine whether or not you feel that this is a good piece of research or it's an average piece of research or it's a bad piece of research. In this case, I would probably say that, you know, this is at least based upon what I'm seeing here in the methodology, probably an average, maybe above average kind of piece of research. You know, they're providing some good things in there in terms of what I'd like to see. But as I've pointed out to you, a lot of the things that I mentioned to you from Think and uh, that you read in that chapter two, you're missing a lot of those pieces in there. So, you know, these are things that, you know, you want to use as you're trying to determine um, how useful this is going to be for your own literature reviews that you are preparing.